Who is Admiral Evelyn Byrd? Ohio State University Libraries. Ohio State University has a good uh, photo archive on Admiral E. Byrd, on his family, on his career, and so on. If you want to check it out, just check it out. Here we have um, well, family and personal photographs of Admiral Evelyn Byrd, of his family, his wife, Mary Byrd, his uh, dog, Igloo, and with his brothers, Harry and Thomas. Uh, it's, I'm trying to make him look a little bit more personal, to make him more tangible. Here we have a couple of photos of Admiral Evelyn Byrd in civilian clothing as a young officer um, in the Naval Academy and later as the Admiral uh, in the US Navy, of course. Wikipedia says that Richard Evelyn Byrd Rear Admiral Richard Evelyn Byrd was born October 25th, 1888 and died on March 11th, 1957. He was a pioneering American polar explorer, aviator and the recipient of the Medal of Honor, the highest honor that a U.S. soldier can get. Richard Byrd claimed the North Pole flight in 1926 with his co-pilot Floyd Burnett he made a transatlantic flight in 1927 and made his first Antarctic expedition to the South Pole in 1928-1930. Bird's later South Polar Expeditions. Bird undertook four more expeditions to Antarctica from 1933 to 1935, from 1939 to 1940, and, well, from 1946 to 1947, and the last in 1955-1956. This one from 1955-1956 we'll check out more closely later. In late 1938, Bert visits Hamburg and was invited to participate in the 1938-1939 German Neuschwabenland Antarctic expedition, but declined. Wikipedia on New Swabia. New Swabia, or German for Neuschwabenland, is a section of the continent Antarctica between 20 degrees east and 10 degrees west, which was claimed by Nazi Germany between 19 January 1939 and the 8th of May 1945. It is named for the German region of Swabia. We are interested in the conspiratorial part of this uh, document. If Wikipedia says there's a conspiracy, there's always a conspiracy. New Swabia's role in alternative historical theories. An esoteric Hitlerist legend recounts that Adolf Hitler did not commit suicide in 1945, but fled to Argentina, then to an SS base under the ice in New Swabia during the early 1950s, where he resumed his career as a painter. According to this account, Operation High Jump, the largest expedition mounted to the Antarctic, is claimed to have been sent there to wipe out the Nazi presence. The New York Times Archives, article preview. Nazi base reported in Antarctica, repair shop at Deception Bay, 500 miles south from South America, is blown up by bird. The date is the New York Times, May 6, 1941. How to read the full article. As you can see, we cannot access an entire article. You have to pay for it. That's how they keep us from the information. But at least we have established the fact that there was some kind of war going on in, South, in the South Pole. Bird stresses use of Arctic in a war, November 18, 1947. Another article in the New York Times. Noting that the area within the Arctic Circle is most important strategically, Admiral Richard E. Byrd, US in, USN retired, warned last night that in an event of another war, the center of action would be across the top of the world. The German Antarctic expedition, led by Alfred Richer, 
consisted only of one ship, the Neuschwabenland, 33 expedition members and 24 crew members. Operation High Jump on Wikipedia. Operation High Jump, officially titled the United States Navy Antarctic Development Program, 1946-1947, was a United States Navy operation organized by Rear Admiral Richard Ebert in Antarctica under the command of Richard Crewson, which was launched on 26 August 1946 and lasted until 1947. The massive Antarctic task force included 4,700 men, 13 ships and multiple aircraft. Officially, well, they claim here that the operation was for the following reasons. First reason, to train personnel and test material in frigid zones. Two, to consolidate and extend American sovereignty over the largest practical area of the Antarctic continent. 3. To determine the feasibility of establishing and maintaining bases in the Antarctic and to investigate possible base sites. They were thinking themselves of building a base there. Remember that. Part 4. To develop techniques for establishing and maintaining air bases on the ice, with particular attention to the later applicability of such techniques to operations in interior Greenland. 5. To amplify existing knowledge of hydrographic, geographic, geological, meteorological and electromagnetic conditions in the area. Uh, again, there is a geological expedition on the, um, on the fifth part. The single newspaper report, which has led to all the occult mysteries surrounding Bird's later years, appeared in the prestigious Chilean newspaper El Mercurio of Santiago on 5th March 1947. The article by Lee von Atta entitled Admiral Richard E. Byrd refers to the strategic importance of the poles had been sent from on board Mount Olympus on the high seas. It is often misquoted in translation by occult enthusiasts, the usual interpolations in the text being of flying saucers or flying objects having the ability to fly from pole to pole at incredible speeds. But the unembellished text is extraordinary enough by itself and opens as follows. I quote, Admiral Byrd declared today that it was imperative for the United States to initiate defense measures against the possible invasion of the country by hostile aircraft operating from the polar regions. The Admiral stated, I don't want to frighten anyone unduly, but it is the bitter reality that in the case of a new war, the continental United States will be attacked by aircraft flying from one pole or from both poles. Well, um, we have seen that Admiral Byrd is not a lunatic. He was a highly decorated uh, admiral in the US Navy. Chilean newspaper El Mercurio on Admiral Richard E. Byrd. El Almirante Richard Ebert se refiere a la importancia estratégica de los polos, or in English, the Admiral Richard Ebert refers to the importance, to the strategic importance of the poles. El Almirante dijo, no intento asustar a nadie, pero la amarga realidad es que, de ocurrir una nueva guerra, los Estados Unidos serán atacados por aviones que volaran sobre uno u ambos polos. Esta declaración fue hecha a manera de recapitulación de los ejecutores del propio Bird como explorador polar. Or in English, the Admiral said, It is not my intent to scare anybody, but it is the hard reality that in case of another war, the United States will be attacked from aircraft that can fly from pole to pole, or that are coming from the pole, in this case the South Pole. Uh, well, these are also my closing statements. Uh, for the people who have listened all the way, thanks a lot for listening. <laughs> it's a long clip. Uh, good night.